She's back. <laughs> Wesley Ann Scorgi is here. Uh, Rich by 30 is the name of the book. Uh, many great resources when it comes to uh, sound financial advice. And uh, this time around, we're talking college freshmen setting up for financial success. It is a big time, and there are a lot of expenses. There are tons, and we're not talking just about tuition. That's a big chunk of it, but we're talking about books. If you belong to a science program, you might actually have to pay for labs and equipment, computers, and there are essential items and the non-essential items. So which, what, what are essentials? Those are the things that you need to spend money on to actually advance your learning. So having the right software, for example, having the right books, though you can get them used. Oh, it was all about the used books. <laughs> Absolutely, to save a and of course the non-essential items. These are things like the, the fashion and the shoes and having the nice laptop cases and whatnot. But I think one of the top things a student can do in their first week is determine what is essential, what is not essential, and what the heck can they afford. Fashion went out the window in university. I had yeah. two of the most economical jogging suits that I wore <laughs> on rotation four years straight, no joke, but we got by. Uh, but this idea for parents, when you come in, it, 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 maybe it's not just one child, uh, there are multiple. If you have not saved, or maybe there's a small amount in an RESP, how do you approach the overwhelming task of, of covering everything? Well, first off, one of the biggest mistakes I see parents parents making is they go into their RRSPs, so their retirement savings, they raid them and they start paying for their children's education. This is, it makes no financial sense. Think about the airplane safety video. You have to secure your own mask first in the event of a drop in cabin pressure and then you help that person sitting beside you. Same principle applies. You're in no position as a parent to really help your children if your own financial foundation isn't solid. Do not raid your retirement savings. Instead, if you really want to help, have your, you know, space out those payments as best you can. Use an RESP and you might actually have to ask Junior to chip in and don't feel guilty about that. And when you say chip in, this was something my parents encouraged the idea of working alongside the education, not to uh, hinder the quality of education, but to actually have responsibility in the process. And it advances your education because as you take a part-time job on, hopefully it might be related to what you're studying, you're making friends, you're having new experiences, you have tasks and a boss and you have to get things done. This is all real world. You have to pay taxes. Turns out that those students that actually work while they're in school have a more well-rounded experience, they're more likely to get a better quality job, and they have fun in the process. Their marks often don't suffer. Just more responsibility. Just more responsibility. And, and better with the multitasking, uh, if we put that point on. Student loans were always a great resource, but the thing I always heard from people that graduated was they were paying their student loans for years and years after in the workforce. What's the best way to approach managing this? So most students have to take out a loan or a line of credit. What you don't want to do is take out too much or use it for the wrong reasons. And I saw this when I was going to university, taking out too much on the line of credit and buying non-essential items. You don't want to have these massive student loans that carry on well into your 30s while all your friends are buying houses, you're still chipping away at these loans. Take on the least amount, try and space it out, negotiate on the interest rate, and for goodness sake, when you graduate, pay it back as quickly as you can. You don't want that ball and chain to be dragging along with you into your future. There were some uh, uh, interest-free student loans I would see, but when you say negotiate on the interest rate, what's a good benchmark of you shouldn't be paying higher than a certain amount? You know, it's hard to say because interest rates do change often. Uh, right now, though, generally with a student line of credit, you're paying a few percentage points above the prime rate, and so too you'll pay with your government student loans. You'll find a little bit more flexibility if you're dealing with your bank, though, because the government obviously has quite a strict framework upon which they base the, uh, the interest rate for the student loans. What you should keep in mind though, as a recent graduate and as a student, there's a lot of tax benefits that come your way. So even though it feels like a squeeze on the interest rate, as you start earning an income, there are benefits and you'll often get most of your taxes 
back. You can use that not to go on a trip to Cuba, but to pay off those student loans would be my recommendation. Tips on being a good money manager. Mm -hmm. Again, the uh, book is Rich by 30. Uh, more interesting ideas to own the money game, especially for the college freshmen out there and families, because it is an important time. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Always good to see you. Always good advice.